G'day friends and welcome to our bushfire safety system install series. This was a massive project that took about five full days to complete and we ended up learning way too much to condense into one video. In the last three episodes we saw how the trenches were dug, how all of the components were installed and also the firefighter pump set up. And now in this video, we will cover how the system was designed, including charts and calculations that you can use to design your very own irrigation system and do it right the first time. All right, g'day guys, and welcome to this video. You probably won't see my face for the rest of it. So I thought I'd say g'day in this one and also give you a bit of background about how this video came together. Um, Basically, I didn't go online and find all this information myself. I had no idea what to do when we started our fire irrigation system. So I went to an irrigation specialist supply store and basically they designed the whole system for us. So this video is really just a process of me reverse engineering everything that they showed us putting everything together into a nice neat little package so that you guys can use it as a case study if you're designing something similar. Now some things may have been missed out. If you do find something like that, feel free to let us know in the comments. I would be glad to know anything else that we can add to this. Without further ado, let's jump in and learn all of the numbers and uh, have a look at all the charts that we used to design this beautiful system. The first step was to figure out how many sprinklers were needed to ensure the perimeter of the floodproof mound would be saturated in the event of a bushfire. And I guess at this point, if you're not from Australia, Welcome to our climate of both floods and bushfires. Um, anyway, to sub this picture up, we decided on six sprinklers with a spray radius of up to 14 meters and also two hydrant points to connect firefighter hose reels to to put out spot fires or just for transferring water. And if you want a perfect lawn, you will want more overlap with the sprinklers but we were already pushing the limits of how much water we could transfer to the mound. So that's where we opted for six. And to run the sprinklers and the firefighter hose reels, there is a two inch poly pipeline going from the pump by the dam to a junction point where the flow splits off into three one and a half inch lines. The reason as to why these pipe dimensions were chosen will be covered next. Next up, the guys at the irrigation store recommended us to use the Hunter PGP pop-up sprinklers with the number 10 red nozzle attachment. These sprinklers come with a variety of nozzles that can spray anywhere from about 6 meters radius to 14 meters radius. And you can also adjust the circumference at which they rotate and the little screw at the top of the sprinkler head holding the nozzle in place can also be adjusted to slightly decrease flow rate and distance sprayed and you can find a bunch of useful info on these sprinklers on youtube and so with this chart you basically just look through the graphs to find your desired spray radius which then lets you know the volume of water used and the pressure required for the sprinklers to work well so in this case i settled for a spray radius of about 13 meters to use less water and less pressure and long story short the sprinkler system required about 120 liters per minute and 250 kilopascals of pressure which is also equivalent to 25 meters of head in fluid mechanics the total head means the total height to which you can pump so this pressure is the same as pumping to a point 25 meters higher than where the pump is located. And now that we knew the pressure that the sprinklers required, before seeing if our pump was able to handle this, we first had to check the friction loss in all of our poly pipe lines. And even though this table seems complex, the key is to look at the consistent number of meters of head in friction loss per 100 meters of poly pipe. Because by doing this, you learn that generally one inch poly is limited to transferring just over 30 liters per minute before the friction loss makes it inefficient. One and a half inch poly pipe can only take just over 100 liters per minute and two inch poly pipe can transfer just over 200 liters per minute. And if you've heard anyone say that doubling a size of pipe quadruples the amount of water that it can handle, this isn't always true because jumping from one inch to two inch poly pipe allows for seven times the flow rate, while jumping from one and a half inch to three inch poly pipe 
does allow for about four times the flow rate. So to be fully sure, the best way is to find a chart like this one and just refer to that. So when we use the figures from our system, the 120 liters per minute that the sprinklers required was divided by two to account for them branching into two lines, which gave us 60 liters per minute, which when flowing through one and a half inch polypipe creates 2.44 meters of head of friction loss per 100 meters. So 2.44 meters head spanning over 150 meters is 2.44 multiplied by 1.5 and that gives us 3.66 meters of head of friction for the sprinklers line. And lastly, not forgetting the 20 meters of two inch poly, which gives us 3.13 meters of head per 100 meters. And when we multiply that by 0.2 for a 20 meter span, this equals 0.63 meters of head and friction loss. And after crunching those numbers, we know that the total friction loss from the polypipe circuit is about 4.3 meters of head. Next up, we needed to check if our firefighter pump would be able to provide enough water and pressure for the system to work. So after combining the 25 meters of head needed for the sprinklers to work well, with the 5 meters of actual elevation of our sprinklers in relation to the pump, and then adding the 4.3 meters of head that we calculated from our polypipe charts just then, we now get a total of 34.3 or 343 kilopascals of pressure required to run the system. And now taking a look over this chart, we can see that our pump can provide 50 meters of head in pressure while supplying 150 liters per minute. But we don't want to run anything at full capacity so for that, Davy Pumps provided the extended service duty curve, which shows us that at 3000 RPM, our pump can put out 150 liters per minute at a pressure of 36 meters head or 360 kilopascals. So from these numbers, we already know the sprinklers will run just fine. But now as a bonus, let's take a look at whether we can also use the fire hose while the sprinklers are running all at the same time. So after a quick Google search, we can see that 220 kilopascals of pressure is needed for a firefighter hose. And we've already got 250 kilopascals in the system from the sprinklers, so that is more than enough. And 0.45 liters per second is just under 30 liters per minute. And now going back to our friction loss chart, 30 meters of our 19 millimeter firefighter hose putting out 30 liters per minute creates 19.6 meters of head per 100 meters, which is 5.9 meters of total friction loss. And then not forgetting the 50 meters of polypipe leading up to that hydrant point, which adds another 3.5 meters head of friction loss too. And now this gives us a total resistance of 6.3 meters of head for the firefighter hose setup. And now going back to our pump chart and adding that 6.3 meters fire hose resistance to the rest of the numbers, we have a total of 40.6 meters of head, which is 406 kilopascals. I wrote this part in orange here because here we can see that we're starting to push the limits of that extended service duty curve, but we're still pretty close. And mind you, if your sprinklers are going and then you turn on the hose and the pressure drops slightly, with parameters like this, it'll hardly be noticeable. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful for anyone out there looking to do some irrigation work. Apologies if it was a bit tedious of a video. Designing these things is best to be done right the first time and installing a big system like this isn't a matter of just putting everything together and hoping for the best. By using these charts, you can guarantee your system performs the way you want it to. And next up, we'll be sharing how a bore well is drilled. It's an epic video and we hope to see you there.